Hi, this is Marlene with Miami Ghost Chronicles, and I want to welcome you to another episode of Stories of the Supernatural. Whether you're watching a video or listening to a podcast, please like and subscribe to us so that you can get notification of when a new show is released. Links to videos or MP3 files can be found on MiamiGhostChronicles.com. Go to MarlenePardo.com for information on new book releases. I narrate several podcast series that can be found on major podcast platforms and can also be listened to via Alexa, Sonus, and other home systems. Look for Supernatural Storytime for scary storytelling, Nightshade Diary for classic horror and adventure stories, Stories of the Supernatural for interviews with different guests on the show. If you want to get noteworthy news about the paranormal world, true crime conspiracy stories, and anything that is just plain weird, just visit Stranger Than Fiction Stories tab at MiamiGhostChronicles.com or find us on Blogspot. I want to thank you for being part of my audience, and I think you are all wonderful. So, hi everybody. How's everybody doing? It's Marlene with Stories of the Supernatural. Everybody's having a, a good week. I am too. Everything is well here. Uh, when I have a chance, I'm going to do a, go out there and shoot a short film of all the chickens because, like I said, I've got five chicks of my hen that hatched. I bought some blue Andalusians and I've got two more hens that have gone renegade on me again. And all of a sudden I look and it's like, wait a minute, what's under there? Under that tarp. It's my chicken on top of 12 eggs. And one of them is very special because she's a frizzy. And anybody that's familiar with chicken world, frizzies are real cute and fluffy. And they have little eggs. And I've got one of those on five eggs. I've had those frizzies for like four years. I picked them up when they were just hatched out of pet shop. And they're real difficult to bring when they're, especially when you don't have a mama hen with a, with one of the lamps, but I have them. I have like three of them. So, and uh, I'm going to see if I take some, some videos for you guys of chicken world on the homestead. That's number one. Number two, remind you guys to sign up for the, uh, my, uh, my Substack newsletter. Okay. It comes out once or twice a week. Interesting stuff, weird uh, articles, just, you know, off the cuff stuff, new writing projects. Also, uh, if you go to eerie.news, I do that about every other day. That's just news stories of weird, unusual things, you know, like stuff to take your mind off reality. Like, I mean, why not? Right. And then I had somebody ask me the other day about my hair, because for those of you who caught my uh, New Year's resolution video, where we were talking about people and their news resolutions, and right about now, what is it, May? is when news resolutions start going like into the ditch. And I promised I made a news resolution. I wasn't going to cut my hair. All right. Which I've had my hair on the short end for like maybe the last ooh, 20, 25 years. And so far I've been close to it. There's been days that, you know, you look in the mirror and you're like, Oh, you know, and you think you're having a bad hair day, but for anybody that's had short hair for a really long time, everything, Looks like a bad hair day. So, so far, I have not touched my hair. I've not even trimmed it. And I promised one year, one year on January 1st, I'll go ahead and get it trimmed. Because if I took all this trouble to let it grow, I'm going to let it grow out. But I haven't touched it. Because I'm afraid to touch it. I'm afraid that if I go for a trim, I'm going to tell it, take it off. So, yeah, I have stuck to my New Year's resolution. I'll put a link to my New Year's resolution video about hypnosis and New Year's resolutions and why so many people... They start the New Year's resolution right about now is when things start falling apart for apparently different reasons. But in reality, no, it's just our subconscious mind. But that's a whole nother show. Let's get on to the good part. The good part is who we have as guests. One of them has been here before. His name is Preston Dennett. And he began investigating UFOs and the paranormal in 1986. When he discovered that his family, friends, and co-workers were having dramatic, unexplained encounters, since then he has interviewed hundreds of witnesses and investigated a wide variety of paranormal phenomena. He is a field investigator for the Mutual UFO Network, a.k.a. MUFON, a ghost hunter, a paranormal researcher, and the author of 28 books and more than 100 articles on UFOs and the paranormal. Now, in his latest book that he released titled Symmetry, a true UFO adventure, he tells the story of how in January of 1973, 
14-year-old Dolly Saffron gazed out the window of her home near the Florida Everglades. Without warning, a UFO dropped from the sky and hovered in her backyard. To her shock, Dolly could see thin, gray-skinned figures with large, dark eyes staring back at her. I'm not, I could read the rest, but I'm not going to because we're going to let her tell us about it. Anyway, this book is not only a gripping true life adventure story, it answers many of the questions surrounding the UFO phenomenon. Why are they here? Where do they come from? What is the alien agenda on our planet? Fully illustrated with eyewitness drawings and UFO photo photograph symmetry, a true UFO adventure contains a profound message to all humanity directly from the ETs. So help me welcome them. How are you guys doing today? Doing very well. How are you? Hi. Great. Nice to meet you, Dolly. And nice I'm to glad to have her. you back, Preston. Okay. I was going to say, well, so what have you been up to? But I can see what you've been up to. <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you, um, how, let, what part of, you know, I was born and raised in Miami. Dolly. Really? Yes. Wow. And, you know, Everglades were always to the west of us. So right. I kind of understand what you're talking about uh, as far as people don't realize uh, that uh, Everglades, there's still a lot of areas that are uncharted or unknown about the Everglades, even at this point. Yes. Um, so uh, go I, ahead. Uh, I know there's been a lot of building out there since I left. Um, when I was young, we were out past 124th uh, Avenue, which I understand that's what all the way down to 148th or something like that. I still have friends that live out there. It's way out there. But it was um, oh, a no. bird road all the way near the Gumbo Limbo Trail. Yeah, so, bird. Yeah. God, yeah. See, yeah. this we, me and her are on the same wavelength. Because I tell everybody, I, I, I was living in Miami when they built the Palmetto Expressway. Wow. Okay. okay. And you know, everything out there was dairy cows. Everybody right. sees Miami now. They have no Brahma idea as well. Was, Brahma too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Miami Beach. What's downtown Miami now? And everything west of that was dairy cows, and then the Everglades. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And maybe you know that agricultural area in Homestead, you know where they right. used to have the orange groves and stuff like that. But that was right. again strictly agricultural. Then you'd go into you know the right. Keys, Florida City, all that stuff. Yeah. But that was like not no man's land, but. Um, as a matter of fact, I researched one time, even at the turn of the century, outlaws would go into the Everglades because even the lawmen wouldn't go after them because it was so full of mosquitoes and stuff. Right. Snakes. That a lot skaters, of them would hide out, thing. like in uh, the Everglades and Chakaloski and all that area, 10,000 Islands, uh, a little right. on the West Coast. I used to go out to 10,000 Islands. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. okay. Now that we <laughs> pressed us looking at us going, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I've been but there. anyway, <laughs> I can attest that what she's describing is absolutely what it is. You know, you go now, right. there's an area that um, it's called Kendall now. Right. I, it, it was, they had strawberry fields out well, there. Kendall's was, always kind of, yeah, the city of Kendall. But you remember where Kendall Mall was? Deadland yes. and all that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. With the big all horse. That, you know, of course, yeah. US1 was Old South Dixie Highway. You remember that they right. made it big, but there was yes. Old South Dixie Highway. And that yep. was the one road that you could take to go south into the Florida Keys. And, right. you know, there was these little towns, you know, that color right. ridge. Ripping back the causeway. Bigger. Is the yeah. shark still out there? No. Or is it gone now? Oh, no. Oh, there it is. Wow. No. It be, it be, it, I guess it was too realistic. And it it became a politically correct dolphin. Oh, <laughs> you know, God. Is, okay. What was okay. it? Was it a tiger shark, I think, that they had? Yes, it was a big tiger shark. And he was, was mean. It had Brandon Park or Rickenbacker Causeway, which right. I thought I'm from. They had this huge right. life size tiger, which I'm thinking, was it a real tiger that they stuffed? That yes. Been, right? Uh huh. It was one they caught and they fiberglass okay. him and put him in there. They yep. had him like twirling around, but it right. was, nobody forgot that. And the entrance to the just the thing to see when you're going uh -huh. to the beach. Right. I don't know where I lost at some point. They took off and they put a big dolphin with two baby dolphins. I was like, oh, uh, God. yeah, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> I was okay. like, why remind people like give the beach a bad name? You know, that no. the shark could get you. But uh, yeah, believe it or not, back once in a while, off over there, Key Biscayne, there was reports of 
right. they would haul in tiger sharks. You know yep. that, right? Yep. When I was a when I was a teenager, I landed a uh, life a lifeguard job. I had to fight for it. I mean, we all competed with one another. I was seventeen, and I did it. I got a spot on a tower. Okay, and mm -hmm. uh, two or three times I've been on the boats with them. They had the gas pellets on the, mm -hmm. and uh, we go out there and shoot one and drag it out to sea, trying to get them to follow us back out because we they were mating, and we have these huge waves of sharks coming in, all different kinds. And yeah, right. they had uh, tiger sharks coming from time to time. Yep. Well. What people don't realize is that tiger sharks, everybody thinks of the great white as being man no. eaters, but tiger sharks, no. they're the only uh, Yeah, they'll, 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 they'll take eat you. anything. They will eat human beings. Yes. Yes. No they problem. Do. They yep. do. So, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> well, I got to tell you what high school I went to. I don't know where you went. What high school I graduated Southwest Miami Senior High School. No, that was no my one. alma mater. Yeah. I was living at that time in Hialeah because we moved to Hialeah. Uh, all that there was okay. in Hialeah was the racetrack. Right. Okay. It was a very there. sleepy southern town. Right. Nobody yeah. lived out there. No. Nope. The only thing yeah. was in the winter, the horse races would come to Hialeah racetrack. Right. And the houses were cheap. You know, I think right. it was a slew of houses that they built like after World War II and stuff yes. like that. Right. And we moved out there and I went to to Monsignor Edward Pace, which was in Opelaka. Right. Oh, and wow. Monsignor a lot of my friends went to Hialeah High School. And then eventually yeah. we moved out west, southwest. Wow. But yeah, up to like 1980, okay. I lived in Hialeah. That's what I'm saying. I saw all that transformation of that whole area, South Florida, as far as Miami-Dade County and Monroe right. County. Right. How it changed. It exploded. Yes. Yeah. I know. Yeah. You know that over there, a lot of people, and I'm going to ask you if you remember this, Dolly, and we'll get back to the subject. <laughs> Do you ever remember um, east of Hialeah when it became like the northwest section? I heard at one point that later on it was converted into an uh, like an old trailer park, believe it or not, in Hialeah. That one time it was a POW camp for Germans. Yes, absolutely. I heard that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. My grandfather talked about it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I know a lot about of people it. don't believe that we had something like it, that. Right yes, here, we, we did. did. We did. Okay. Yes. Got to remember so, they had a couple of bases on in Florida near, you know, south of there. And they didn't yeah. put the camps in too close to the bases, but they were bringing them in. Yes, they were. Right. And the one in Richmond Heights is where the yeah. one that they had is the, what they call Zeppelins. Right. They had those based out of there. Yep. And uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, they, they still oh, have a lot busy. of towers there. Yeah. 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 People don't realize a lot of stuff was going on in South Florida, even though it kind of was like nothing going on, kind of. But being yeah. on the tip of Florida, yeah. So now that okay, now that we've pressed it, it's like, can we talk about the UFOs? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, okay, 1973. Well, okay, I don't know who whoever wants to go first. How did okay, you had this experience, Dolly, and how did you? Or when did you decide that to tell that story and get together with Preston? And if you want to go into how that happened and what the okay, um, all right, um, okay, um, my experiences started at about ten months old, and uh, my father was a contactee also, but I didn't know about it until after 1973. Um, uh, so I remember I have patches of memory of knowing something was going on with me, and by the time I was 14, I was losing it. Okay, I just wanted to know. Am I nuts or is this real? Okay. Mm -hmm. I was all on my own about it. My mother hated talking about it and I didn't know what to do. And so I decided that the next time started something started happening to me, that was going to be it. That was the moment that started. I would go for it and try to remember, you know, force myself, make something okay. happen, plead. I don't know. And I was out. Um, I used to you remember the Miami Dade plans of Tran transit planetarium. I of took course. astronomy lessons there, okay? And okay. I had my telescope out one night, and I was doing my homework. It's 1 o'clock in the morning. It's in the summertime. I was doing summer school that year. Okay. And my dad said, go to bed. And I said, okay. So I packed down my scope, went into my room, got dressed, ready for bed. But I don't really sleep. I sleep maybe two or three hours a day only. That's it. And uh, my bed was right next to the wall where my big jealousy windows were. You remember that they had the tile ledges on them and everything? Yeah. So I used to sit on my bed and look like this out the window. I always had my windows open. And um, I was looking up in the sky and I realized, holy cow, there's 
hundreds of lights up there and they're not stars. And I went, oh my God, it's happening, it's happening, okay? I couldn't believe what I was seeing, but uh, it was happening. And I watched them and they paired off in twos and uh, they went east, west, north, and south, okay? Two pairs, well, yeah, two pairs of two came down. Two went toward Dade Lama and the other two came out to where we were, okay? They were, in other words, two went east of us and two came to us. One went further west to the glades, and okay. one came down over our, our property, our house, my the back of our house actually, and it came down right behind where my room was, and I could see the trees start whipping around, you know, and uh, you remember the trees that would fold up like they were going to sleep? I had two of those in the back, okay? Yes, and they, yes. Every last one of those leaves went bloop like that, and they were trying to sway, and I was like, oh my. What the hell? And I'm memorizing this thing. It's just coming down. Because it changed. How old color. were you at this time, Dolly? I was 14. 14? Okay. Yeah. Going on 15, almost 15. It was January. I was about 14 and three quarters. Okay. Okay. Uh, my birthday is Sunday, by the way. Oh, happy <laughs> so birthday. we're coming up on it. Thank you. Preston's is Friday. Um, oh, so <laughs> happy birthday to you, Preston. Yeah. So um, uh, as it came down, you know, I saw it. I realized it was metallic. And I'm staring at it. I'm trying to memorize it now. I mean, I'm committing it heavy into my memory. I'm not going to forget this. Not. And I got all the way up to the top of it, looking at it. I mean, every detail of it. And I see ports, you know, port windows. And in those port windows were one being in each one staring dead at me through my window. And I was like, you know, and uh, I thought, mm, no, I can't handle that. <laughs> they they were different, okay? And I turned and I was going to dive under my bed. I mean, what else do you do when you're that freaked out? And I never made it to the floor. The room exploded in blue white light and I froze and my memory ends there. I woke up on the floor three or four hours later. My mom was out in the kitchen making breakfast for my dad. And I was sitting there in somebody else's jammies, not mine, inside out, backwards, and feeling yucky, you know? I felt funky. And I was mad. I started crying. I was so mad because I wanted to remember. And I thought, damn it, you know, what the hell is wrong with me? Okay. So I went and got in the shower because I had to go to school that day. And I got my shower, got dressed. I moseyed into the kitchen, sat down. My mom said, make coffee. I made coffee. And uh, I'm, I'm questioning her by this time. I'm like, mom, did you guys hear anything last night? Did you see anything? Lights, you know. When I got to there, she turned around and, you know, she said, what are you talking about? I said, you know, something weird going on. And that's when she put her finger in my face and said, no, nope, which meant shut up. Okay. She hated talking about that stuff. So I sat down and had my very first cup of coffee ever. Um, <laughs> it was the equivalent like, I, I can't have a drink, so let me have some coffee. That's about it, let me know? ask you something. You said that your dad had had. Was he living in that same area when he had his experiences? No, he was living up in Wisconsin. Uh, okay. He lived in uh, Bancroft. They had a huge dairy farm up there, okay? Cows, okay? okay? And uh, he and his brother decided to go camping. There's a big uh, national park up there with a big lake on it and everything, and right near him. And uh, they, they pilfered one of the turkeys and went off to kill it and camp out and eat turkey. And okay. they did it, you know, they got it plucked and they got it spitted and they're cooking the thing and it exploded. They didn't take the packet out of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, stupid. So the, they ran up to the lake with the turkey because they're not losing dinner. They're hungry. Uh -huh. And they're cleaning the turkey out. And they finally pulled the packet out. They figured out how to do it. And uh, they had to wash off too because they had turkey guts all over them. Okay. They're wringing their clothes out. They're trying to put their clothes back on. And they saw a light across the lake. And my dad says that it came up over the lake and then just that fast, it was over the top of their heads. They were looking up at it. My dad tried to run. He couldn't move. He said he was frozen to the spot. And he guesses his brother was too, he was standing behind him. The next thing my dad remembers is being on board and talking okay. to Grace. And he said they weren't the little Grace. He met the tall Grace first. Okay. okay. And they talked to him for a couple hours, you know, about his life and everything. And he realized that they were following us, our family. And they hadn't uh, wanted to know what he was going to do with his life. They talked to him about it. Uh, my father was already wanting to be an architect at that age. He could draw anything. He'd already draw Greek buildings. You know, the, the key, like, 
you'll see a column and you've got this spiral thing that's all square looking. It's called a key. And I, I, anyway, so long story short, he had that experience. I did not know about it until after mine and I was freaking out because when I was sitting at the table drinking coffee, the news came on. We had, you remember, <laughs> what's his name? Shoot, Paul, Harvey. Right? Paul Harvey, thank you. Paul Harvey was on, okay? Okay. Every morning, okay. you remember that? Every yes. morning. Yes. Okay, so uh, the news came on and two police, the news immediately went to, two Dayland police officers reported a UFO this morning, early. Oh. And they described it, they talked about it, it buzzed them twice. Literally, but some scared the hell out of them, and uh, oh my I was God. like, "Oh my God, it's real! I have confirmation. First time in my life ever. I'm not out of my mind." Okay, I blew up in the kitchen. <gasps> my mother turned around and she went, "No, no, 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 no! You're dreaming. Get out of the kitchen now." Dejected me, start walking out the door. My dad was rounding the corner, and he said, "Just go calm down. Go meditate something. Just I'll talk to you about it later." So I walked back to the bathroom, shut the door, turned the lights out, locked it, slid to the floor. And at first I started crying because it was overwhelming me. And then I started trying to re-remember re everything. Okay. And okay. I kicked it apart. I mean, I started with the first sight and I tick, 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 tick my memory, each little thing, seeing it in my mind. Uh -huh. And God help me, I started to remember at that moment. I started pulling it back. Okay. Okay. And, um, I didn't have all of it, but by, God, by the time I made it to school that day, it was hitting me hard. I also uh -huh. had a migraine headache from the whole thing. It was killing me. My okay. first thing happened is my friend uh, grabbed me and ran the bathroom with me. And she said, guess what I saw? Guess what I saw? I'm like, oh, my God. And she said, I saw a UFO. And I said, where were you? And she told me. And she wanted to tell everybody. And I said, no, they're going to think you're crackers. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. no, we're going to keep this a secret. You will be ostracized. And I take it she was close to, to you then, right? Very close, yes. Um, we'd known each other. Her dad was uh, also uh, in the Army, and he was there uh, infantry as well. Okay. My dad was an airborne ranger. So um, I had a really, really, really bad headache. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't think. And one of my teachers in the science department was kind of geeky, a very intelligent guy, knew a lot about everything. And he had this biofeedback machine and he was hot to try it on somebody. He says, come here, come here, come here. I want to try this on you. I'm like, okay, all right, fine. So I didn't know it, but it, he put electrodes on my head and it ran a train if you could put your brain into alpha. And uh, mm -hmm. I started that sucker up the minute I he told me to do it. It was going. And that freaked me out. <laughs> okay. And okay. I decided, you know, I'm leaving. I'm going. I'm out of here. I picked myself up out of that thing, chair that I was sitting in. And uh -huh. I left. I walked off property. Now, you know where Southwest Miami Senior is. It's 86. Yes. yes okay. Sir. I had to walk all the way back. You know how far that is. That's a long yes. damn way. And yes. they had the Metro buses, but they only went to uh, Westchester. Okay. okay. Uh, Westchester Mall and just a little bit past that, but not much past it. They yeah. weren't going out that far. So I had yeah. to get off there and walk the rest of the way. Well, I kept playing it over and over and over and over in my head like crazy. Okay. And by the time I walked in the door, the headache was leaking out my ears. It felt like, I felt like there was fluid draining out of my head. Okay. And my nose was running. I had a bloody nose. I mean, I was just messed up. Okay. And, but I had it. I remembered. I got cleaned up. I didn't want to talk to anybody. I just went and laid down. I didn't eat dinner that night. And I just laid there. Okay. My dad finally showed up and he said, I want to take you somewhere tomorrow. Be ready to go early in the morning because it was Sunday. Okay. Okay. And I said, okay. I mean, Saturday, excuse me. And I said, okay. And uh, he got up with me in the morning, put me in the car and, and you know, there's nowhere to eat in Miami back then. Okay. Sure. There's Especially out West like that. Oh, I know. And uh, so he brought uh, a thermos full of coffee, two cups. He drank black. So I was drinking black with him at that point. Uh -huh. And uh, he brought uh, some bread and cheese. Okay. Breakfast. Okay. And we sat in the car. He pulled over near, um, you know, a Grand Union shopping mall. I don't know if it's still there or not. It's I just remember the Grand Union. They don't exist okay. anymore, but I remember them. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. And we were sitting in the parking lot because there's nobody there that early in the morning. And uh -huh. I'm just sitting there and talking. And he's trying to get me to tell him what the hell happened. And I'm 
not understanding why he's so right. damn interested. You know, I thought I was in trouble, honestly. Okay. I thought my mother was getting me in trouble. And he finally right. said, I got something to tell you. And he told me about his encounter, his first encounter, wow. and that he was a contactee and it's lifelong. And he is aware, fully aware also. He's conscious. Okay. And I'm like, <laughs> wow, you know, and freaking me out. <laughs> you know, I just like that probably at that out. point saved your sanity because well, yeah, I, I wanted to die at that moment. I was like, you know, my reality is already split in two by this time. My head hurts, my nose was bleeding. I mean, I was messed up. Okay. Yeah. And I said, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know how to handle this. I'm freaking out because I remembered things, okay. He said, I'm going to take you somewhere. It's somebody you can hypnotize. This is why I love talking to you tonight. And uh, we're going to see if it helps. Calm you down. That was what he said. And I didn't know what the hell hypnotism was back then. I was a teenager. And I said, okay. So we went to this house. Um, it was uh, north of Hialeah. It was in uh, near West Palm somewhere. Okay. Uh, Lake okay. Worth. We, uh, he Lake lived Worth. in Lake yeah, Worth. I'm familiar with Lake Worth, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, when I got there, he introduced me to this guy. His name was Edgar Mitchell, okay. astronaut Edgar Mitchell. Wow. My okay. father worked for NASA, and he knew Edgar Mitchell. I didn't know how well he knew Edgar Mitchell, but it freaked me out because I knew who Edgar Mitchell was, okay? Right. He was developing this institute, Consciousness Institute. He's very into that. And so he started trying to hypnotize me. He got me a big glass of water. He let me go to the bathroom. Uh, we did breathing exercises, you know, calming things. He helped me meditate for five minutes, 10 minutes, okay. you know, and he got me, he was trying to lower me down into calm. Okay. And uh, he, at that point was walking me through the process of going under. And he said, look, I might not be able to take you under right away. It might take a few sessions, you know, mm -hmm. to get you there. I'm like, okay. And about, I don't know, 30 minutes in, he stopped. He looked my dad in the face and said, she is not going to be hypnotized. And he's okay. like, why? He said, she won't relinquish control ever. And I just okay. looked at him, I said, yeah. what do you mean? And he said, you won't allow anybody to mess with you, nobody. And I said, well, that's true. He said, best okay. I can teach you is how to give you meditation techniques, breathing techniques. You know, I'm gonna teach you transcendental meditation, which I already knew. Cause you remember the hair Krishnas that used to live out in the glades? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I was yes. on that campus a lot. Okay, so yes. uh, <laughs> I had a good time with those guys. So I already knew how to do meditation, okay? And um, okay. he okay. said, that's good. And he gave me some things to think about. He told me, he began, he began telling me about his experiences. He swore me to absolute secrecy. I will never divulge anything this man ever told me, ever, okay? okay. okay. But he helped me understand what I was facing, okay? And uh, he told me the last thing he said before I left with him that day was you're going to be contacted. And he said, it's going to be a psychic and you have to be calm when it happens. And he says, please follow what they say to you. I'm like, okay. So about four days later, sure enough, I got downloaded with a message. You wouldn't believe it was massively involved in fast, you know? And I sat there thinking, okay, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> <laughs> do that again? <laughs> Let me ask you something, Dolly. I, okay. was, did your did the did what was happening to you ever overlap with your dad? Did they ever take you both or contact you both? Or I'm had not they allowed to talk about it. Just kept on with you. I cannot talk about that ever. I'm sorry. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. But okay. I will. I will say this. Um, my father's mission was not mine. But I experienced some things with him. Okay. It's a fact. Okay. Okay. Um, can I tell you why? Okay. What? I was just wondering if okay. because it sounds like you said, like at some point he got he was he knew what he had experienced. In he other did. words, oh, he had gone he beyond that. Conscious. I can't remember. Yeah. They never knocked him out. He was never allowed, he they never he never he never decided to be unaware. He's always okay. been aware his whole life. Oh okay. Um, okay. We're very psychic on his side of the family. My great grandmother, his grandmother, was like the family, you know, scary person. And she knew everything. Okay, mm -hmm. and my father was psychic as well. So was my mom. Uh, uh, okay. So, yeah. And Let me uh, ask you something. That time, that time that you described that he was taken in Wisconsin after you know 
with a tur turkey escapade. It sounds yeah. like, had he been taken before that point? Or was that no, the first time? he has no, he said, I didn't, mm, he doesn't think so. He thinks that they were just oh, okay. quietly watching him, you know, uh, cause okay, they can hear Okay, 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 now I understand. Okay. I think they were waiting for him to get away where he wouldn't be seen. They had a lot of hands on that farm. It was constantly busy. It was a, oh, a 3,000 okay. cow dairy farm and which was yes. massively huge. And everybody was working all the time. I mean, you have to do cows twice a day and there's a lot going on in between all that. So, yeah. I okay. don't think they had a okay. chance. So uh, let's fast forward. You said four days later. Yeah. You get yeah what? I got a message and it pretty much said, we're coming to get you in less than 48 hours, um, which didn't give me much of an idea about place and time, but you know, I was like, okay. And they said, be ready. And they had a, a thing. I had to be clean. I had to be wearing something comfortable and preferably no shoes. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So I adopted socks at that point. And um, I was just wandering around my room and the light, it lit up like a banshee. And I saw a huge energy ribbon come through the roof, the window and the wall. It was big, okay? And down this ribbon came two grays, little grays, little AI grays, the ones I saw in that craft, okay? And one held his hand out to me and I'm like, okay, be brave. <laughs> and I took his hand and he sort of wrapped my arm around this midsection and held on to me and took me up that ribbon. The minute we made contact with it, we became weightless. I mean, it was like, oh my God. And he got us all the way to the top. And when we got to the craft, they had an open port door, uh, oblong, okay, rectangular. And uh, he pushed me through it and it that made me uncomfortable because I didn't know what's I didn't know what I was looking at. That ribbon is very bright. Okay, it's shot. Ooh, you know. And uh, I hit the deck, <laughs> went down on my butt, and mm -hmm. I looked up and there's this woman standing there looking down at me. And I realized that she is not short. She's very, very tall, taller than me. And she wasn't smiling, but she had the most beautiful look in her eyes you ever saw in your life. Okay, she had okay. huge mm -hmm. blue green eyes. She mesmerized me, okay? Beautiful woman, elegant even. And all of a sudden I hear, hi. And she said, do you remember me? I'm mama. And I was like, oh, I do remember you. I remember her, okay? I remembered her. And she said, I love you. And she said, stand up, come stand up with me. And when we stood up, that was the first time that I remember, they don't, they don't hug or kiss or anything, they touch foreheads and they okay. inhale, they breathe each other in. And okay. she greeted me that way. And she, she said, I'm so happy, you know, you've, you've, you've crossed over into a, an awareness that we've been hoping you would walk and wake up. And I was like, oh my God, you know? And uh, mm -hmm. the two grays and her took me by the hand and they walked me through the craft. It's a little craft. Okay, mm -hmm. and we were traveling, and the next thing I know, I see in the open port window, you know, it's big <laughs> craft. Okay, and okay. I was like, oh crap, here we go. It was huge, and he flashed at us. Okay, like welcome. Okay. And in the front of it, it's in the front of it. They opened another panel, and we went in through that panel, and uh, we transferred. Uh, the ships got really, really close to one another. That, 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 you know, ribbon, energy ribbon showed up. Only this time we weren't holding it and touching it. We were sort of like it kind of enveloped us a little bit and got us through to the other side. Okay. Okay. It can, it can, it can magnify itself or get small. You can use it either way. And we got in and there were two more grays in there, smaller. And, uh, they gave me about five minutes to orient myself. Everybody was saying hi. And then I hear this voice in my head and I knew instantly who it was. He said, welcome. And he also said, do you remember me? And I was like, oh my God. And he said, it's Talata. And I remembered that I'm the one that calls him that. It's his okay. nickname for me alone, okay? okay. Um, nobody okay. else, I can't say his name, it's long. Have you, you've heard Icelandic, right? It's like yes. that. It's so bloody long. Okay. It, it, I couldn't do it. And I speak okay. Swedish and I couldn't do it. Okay. okay. So 
T L E R A as part of his name in in it. And I said, can I just say Talada? And he said, okay. Um, okay. He welcomed me. He was so happy to see me and. We just enjoyed each other's company for 10 minutes. He started talking to me about what was happening to me. He said, we're gonna take you on a tour of the ship. We're gonna reacquaint you with everything. And he said, so have a good time. And I went with mama and two of the ETs to the small wreck. They took me all the way back through everything. I saw everything. And every time I saw something, my brain went, oh, I know this, you know, I know this, I know this. Um, it shook me up. I was shaking. Uh, I wanted to puke and I did. Okay. And <laughs> I mean, I puked bad. Dolly, do you think they took you then because they were planning to at that age or was it because you started to recover your memories? I think, I think they were hoping that I was going to fulfill something that they were hoping I would fulfill. In other words, um, a lot, a lot of people have the same uh, contact that I have had my whole life, but not everybody overcomes this wall of fear that envelopes everybody. Okay. Sure. Not everybody's as determined as I am. And so I think there's a bunch of us that are out there. They're just not on it yet. Not aware, totally aware yet, or maybe they are and they're just not talking. I mean, I think there's a whole range of that going on. Um, once if I they could jump me, in for a second, yes. yeah, just, just, to, just to clarify a few things. Um, Cause Dolly's talking about mama. Uh, as a beautiful woman, she's actually a tall gray, right? Uh, just so you yeah. know, and and Talada is the <clears throat> entity so, who actually embodies the ship. Uh, many right. witnesses have talked to me about this: how the UFOs, the craft, are themselves alive, sentient. In other entities. words, yes, yes. And this is this is what Dolly remembered because, and she had first met Mama when she was six years old. When she came down after watching Mary Poppins, she thought it was <laughs> Mary an Poppins. Umbrella. Right. It's an umbrella, but she was pulled on board a craft. She met Mama for the first time, but still wasn't yeah. connecting the dots. But you know, at this experience <clears throat> at age 14, she gets to meet Mama fully consciously. Well, I mean, she right. remembers. I, I remember there's been a couple of sci-fi shows where this the rocket or the spacecraft is sentient, not robotic, you know, sometimes, but actually sentient. It's yeah. a sentient right. being. He is a disembodied, non-corporeal, interdimensional being, very, very highly evolved and old, old, been around a long time. And he indwells the craft. The craft is slightly biological, like the AI greys are, the small mm -hmm. ones. Right. And he, is, he, 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 the ship becomes his body and he, he runs everything on the ship, everything. All ET craft, all of them are that way. There are sentient beings running those crafts. Okay. So they're psychically run. Let me ask you, are they sentient because of whoever's in there meshes with it? Or yes, is it has its own individual yeah. sentience? In other words. No, it's being indwelled by that being Talara. Yes. <clears throat> okay. All right. Yeah, okay. just like the human body. You know, the yeah. human body itself right. is not conscious. We right. embody it. Right. Exactly. We indwell our own bodies. Yeah. Um okay. Once they got me through, you know, reacclimating to everything, uh, they even showed me my quarters, which I was surprised about that. I had quarters and um, I actually had to go to the bathroom because I was puking so bad and I need to clean up. Okay. Uh -huh. They wanted my clothes off me anyway. They wanted me to decontaminate. So we got all my clothes off me because I puked everywhere, cleaned me up, got me decontaminated, gave me something to wear and um, took me back in with Talata, who's in, in what I term the helm, okay? Uh, they think of it as the place of movement. That's how they think about this, okay? okay. Um, their, their diction, their syntax, everything is so off us. It's, they're very much like us, but we're talking about beings that think differently because they're that evolved. Um, right. They sat me down in the seat. They let me feel it, the, the pilot seat. Um, they explained it to me. They walked me through it, told me what it was, blah, 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 blah. And told me that um, it was very, very difficult to drive uh, in the way that it's meant to be driven. But they had a way to let me pilot it for a short distance. And they moved me over. They wanted to take me out first time with the with a gray pilot. They wanted me to feel it, see it, understand it. So first time I flew with them after 14, a gray was driving 
Um, we came back and then an, brought me home. And it took a couple of weeks before they picked me back up again. I needed, I really needed to get over myself. I really, really how did. Long, how long were you gone that first time? I want to say six hours. Okay. Total. Um, they always it's always, it's always skipping over some stuff too. I mean, they took her to visit the moon, you know, Saturn, really, which which may sound you know amazing, but I've tell you, I've heard this before from other contactees. Yeah, uh, so they wanted me to see the from where point. I lived. Yeah, they wanted me to, you know, when I was and little, they would take me to another planet, and I think they were trying to reacclimate me to the universe and to the solar system and all of that. They're trying to bring my memory back up and see how I reacted to it. Uh, they took me to Saturn because I had really never been there before. And okay. they took me to the moon because that was relevant in my life. We did a okay. salt land, you know. Uh, they showed me stuff. We sat there talking about it. And uh, they asked me um, to divulge to them what I was thinking. And uh, if I could have any job with them, if I could do anything with them at all, what mm -hmm. would that be? And that's what right then and there, that's when I decided I was going to fly. Literally. Okay. So basically fly. you're telling me they couldn't read your mind. No, they can read my mind, but. Or, okay. When you're emotional, highly, highly, highly emotional. Okay. And you're trying to think through things. They okay. want you to express yourself because I was getting back into using my psychic mind, not my mouth. Right. I wasn't right. speaking with my mouth. And they, they don't talk like we do. They don't have too many words, but they mm -hmm. have concepts. And they were running me through it again. They were getting me to, that's a thing. I do this all the time with Preston. It's like, were you talking or were you? I'm always psychic when I'm with them. I never, ever speak my mouth. Once in a while I do, but not much. I never, okay. I don't use a lot of words. So yeah, they were running me through my ability to communicate with them. They were reattaching me to it. Okay. I had okay. to become re, re, reorient into being fluent with them. So how so do you come back from this and just become a high school student? I'd be like, that's, I'm not going back to school. Ah, uh, wow. That's been the conflict of my entire life. I mean, can you imagine being taught with them young? I remembered all my lessons eventually, okay? I used uh -huh. to sit in school and drive everybody insane. When I was little, I already knew everything and couldn't figure out how I already knew it, okay? My teachers got so mad at me. One taped my mouth shut. I'm not kidding. In the second grade, she had enough of me. And then the principal said, you can't do that. <laughs> it's going to off. And so they sent me to the library after that. I do my work and get out of that room and go to the library. And I read pretty much every book in that library by the time I was okay. in the sixth grade. Um, uh, so it's been like that all the way through high school, junior high school, the whole thing, you know. Okay. Um, I was already going to Miami Dade half a day when I was 16. I was okay. in the accelerated program. Mm -hmm. You know, we were a college preparatory school anyway, so I did half right. day, and I was just finishing up credits, and I was going to Miami Dade Junior at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, we graduated from Miami Dade Junior because I had an associate. Yes, I mean, I know I, I went to Miami Dade for my first two years. Okay. I know what you're there talking you about there. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, what Dolly's so. talking about is quite common among contactees. And this is why I think David Jacobs called his book Secret Life. Because Dolly, that was one of the first things she told me. She says, I don't know how to explain this to you, but I live two separate lives. One with the ETs and one here on Earth. And it's a culture shock no matter which way you're going. Coming up to the ETs, it's a completely different environment back to back here on Earth. Where yeah. you know, it's completely different so, the way we live. Let me ask you something, Dolly. This is this is what I'm asking you. Here you are. I mean, for all your understanding, you're still a teenager. Okay. Right. How are you handling being, like you said, living this life of a <laughs> normal teenager in high school? I didn't. I did not. <laughs> I literally did not. I was isolated. Um, I had very few friends. I okay. picked them carefully. Uh, they right. had to beat me up practically to get me to go out with them and do stuff. I was okay. constantly yanking my teeth out, trying. Um, uh, I preferred to be alone when I was home. I did not, I had a lot to think about and a lot was going on with me. And then I had to still live my life. I mean, right. mama, mama it demanded that I fulfill my reason for being here in the first place. She says, you have a long life here. You need to learn to acclimate and be you human. Did, and, did you have any siblings, Dolly? I have one brother younger. 
And did he uh, have, do you think he was having his own? No, own? my poor brother, we don't know what happened. When he was in the first or second grade, he came, they called my mom and said, come get him. It's an emergency. And I got in the car with her. You know, she couldn't leave me home alone. I right. was home sick that day. And um, he is, he was seeing double when they called her. He was seeing four of everything by the time she got to him. She okay. dropped me off at her friend's house and went screaming to Georgia Baptist with them. Okay. My dad met her there. By the time my dad got there, his eyes were fixed and dilated. I mean, he was a mess. Um, they, everybody said, Mary, you may have a kid with a midbrain tumor and he's going to die. This is bad. This was that okay. bad. Uh, they drained his spinal fluid and they put him, you remember the torture, torturous tests they did back then? There were no MRIs. They did a pneumoencephalogram on him. Wow. Um, my mom's friend had brought me up to the hospital because when they said he might die, they weren't going to leave me home and not be able to see him at least one more time. Sure. Um, this is emotional for me. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to ask you that. I didn't realize. Yeah. It took his brain out. It, it, he's not, he, his psychic ability went gone. He survived it. He came okay. back from it after all that, but he lost his abilities. I couldn't communicate with him psychically at all. Let me ask you something. But what no. happened with him? Was it a tumor or what happened with him? No, they don't know. They don't the know. They weird. don't know. They don't have any clue. One doctor speculates that he had a midbrain infection, but nobody knows how that bloody could have happened. You know, they don't know. Um, I do know that he had eye surgery. He had He was cross-eyed. He had okay. a bad muscle on one eye. It's mm -hmm. my opinion. That when they did that surgery, that's when they infected his brain, and because your you know your ocul ocular nerve is mid brain as well, and I think yeah. that's what did it. I think that's how it got in, but it silenced him forever. My brother had a 186 IQ. He always still had a 186. He was but very not, uh, intelligent, but not not psychic anymore at all, and uh, that broke me. That that was hard. That was really hard. I can imagine that must have been a very bad isolated me completely you know so um, in other words one way or the other you would never have known because like like you were saying you know that it was a family thing you know right. so that's why i asked that yeah um but that's a very unusual occurrence i know i kept trying to get him to listen to me he was in astronomy as well and he he was an amateur astronomer i mean you should see his telescope I and mean, it's huge Okay. We'd go out and go together. We watched Beetle Geese, you know, Micronova and uh, everything. I mean, we had a good time. He's no longer with us now. He passed away from COVID last year. Oh, and, I'm so sorry. Uh, thank you. And it was hard. My sister-in-law, though, um, uh -huh. Donna, uh, I grew up around here. I used to babysit her. <laughs> and okay. Her children, okay? Her mother was also a contactee and would see... Uh, Talata coming down to get me, and then Donna would see it, and then I would see who was ever working with her coming down for her. We used to talk about it when we got older. Um, oh wow! Yeah, when she she had a, a brain tumor as well at, in the end of her life, and uh, she told Donna two days they've got my implant. They just came and took it, and uh, she had she had an unbelievable contactee long life as well. Okay. Uh, all kinds of adventures and stuff like that. Dolly, just out of case, yeah. you tell me, what are the odds that your brother or your family member marries into a fa or marries into a family that? Come on, what are the odds on that? I know, I know. <laughs> the the ETs bring people incredible. together. That yeah. is incredible. That's yeah. not uncommon, actually. They, really? ETs, yeah, they guide people together. They're very yeah, I've heard of the familial thing, but not yeah. I, my yeah. happened my brother had a very close up UFO experience and ended up marrying a contactee. This is something that is but somewhat did he know consistent. that he was a contactee from before or no? Hmm? no, no. Wow. They got, I'm telling you, they guide people together for a reason. They're very interested in our genetics, right. you know, pulling out the best of what we've got. In terms okay. of psychic ability, health, longevity, you know, uh, var var variation, uh, they are bringing people together intentionally. Right. And, so, and the weird thing about the situation is I stayed with her 
uh, recently, well, the last month before the one year anniversary of his passing, mm -hmm. and I hung out with her. She needed she needed the company, you know, okay. and uh, Tolada kept coming down. <laughs> he kept wow. saying they kept sending the smaller craft, you know, and she got to see him. They came down and did a dance for her and did all kinds of things. Came way low for her, and okay. uh, I actually now know that she's protected by them as well. We, she's okay. got drones that are following her around. But well, let not. me ask you something. As far okay. as her, was she ever being taken or no? Or was she, she doesn't, think so. She doesn't, she doesn't think, think so. She doesn't think so. Okay. Just her mom. And the reason why I'm asking this is makes you think why yes to some people and no to others. You, you understand? Like, have they ever explained yeah. to you what is it that they, I don't know, look for or identify with or what? Preston has a... Preston has a big handle on that from his research, and I agree okay. with it. So I'll let him tell what you. What is it, Preston? What have you come <laughs> up with? Uh, well, I think they contact a lot more people than we realized, because a lot of people choose not to remember or don't remember. That's okay. one factor. I mean, it's really not nearly as uncommon as people think. But I was looking at who's being contacted and why, because it's evenly divided between men and women. It's okay. all over the world. It's got nothing to do with... Uh, your ancestry necessarily, or mm -hmm. blood type, or race, religion, politics, education. What I found were a few very prominent patterns. One is it does track families. Okay. And we have many cases where people have parents, grandparents, great grandparents, and children. So we're talking, you know, multiple generations. Okay. That is a prominent pattern. Okay. Another is that they are very much attracted to people who have powerful psychic abilities. Okay. Uh, and as a general rule, people who are contactees have a wide variety of psychic events and okay. they will even wake this up in people. So it kind of goes both ways, but they're absolutely okay. attracted to that. Okay. And another thing, you know, the last pattern I found, which really surprised me actually, and uh, I think is quite consistent is that people who are being contacted are people who are doing good work for humanity in some level in some capacity okay because i started running into an awful lot of social workers like Bet betty and barney hill were social workers and uh, oh my god you know and, no and he was a postman but she was a social worker you're right i hadn't thought of that yeah and but uh, i know he was doing um i know he was involved in the community though you know exactly uh, yeah, and, I, I'm sorry, and environmentalists, animal rights activists, an awful lot of doctors. Uh -huh. Yeah, 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 I mean, yeah. Doctors, 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 nurses, nurses. Dolly is a nurse, by the way. Uh, there you go. I'm also um, an environmentalist. So, <laughs> yeah, right, right, exactly. That there's an awareness of what's. They love musicians, artists, writers, teachers, people who are trying to help others, people who are in right. service of humanity is very attractive to them because that is a big agenda for them. Let me ask you something. Do you, have they told you or have you seen, is there more than one type of extraterrestrials that are visiting us? Yeah. Um, there are a few different types of grace. It's an ethnic thing. Okay. Um, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to try to explain this. Um, you know, humanity, us, we are related to them. They are our progenitors. Are, okay. Okay. We come from them. All right. Uh, several different ethnicities of them, actually. Okay. Um, here on Earth, we have lots of ethnicities. We're all human. That's mm -hmm. our race. Okay. Right. But we we dime out genetically into different ethnicities. All yes. ethnicity means is color. You know, uh, ability to withstand heat or cold, things like that. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Uh, types of nails, types of hair, blah 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 blah. Okay. We're ethnic. The greys are ethnic as well. I know of a few few of them. Uh, mm -hmm. They're greys that are very, very short. And they kind of, they're not so much gray as they are. They look blue. And they kind of look like trolls. And they're sweet as pie. Okay. okay. I mean, adorable. Okay. <laughs> and I think they developed the AI greys. I think they're responsible for them. I think okay. they brought them into existence way, way a long time ago. Um, okay. I've met uh, greys who are a little bit taller than the three foot. AIs, they're about eh, between five feet, six feet, somewhere around in there, mid-size, okay? Uh, the little AI grace have three fingers, okay? Okay. And and 
They use a, a, a type of apparatus on the tips of their fingers when they're doing fine work. Well, the mid-sized grays only have three fingers as well, and they use those little cuppy things on the ends of their fingers. Okay. That's them. Then there's the tall grays. They're very tall. Mama is six foot two. Okay. And okay. I think she's short <laughs> for them. Okay. And the males are way taller than her. And um, they have four fingers. Um, okay. And very distinct. And they're very elegant. They move elegantly. I don't know how. To... Whitley Strieber is aware of them. He's met them. He knows who I'm talking about. He's had lots of encounters with them. Uh, so that's the grace that I know of. Then there is like Vishnu and they're blue. And a lot of okay. people screw them up with what they call Palladians. They are not. Mm -hmm. uh, they are not. They are an ancient race and they're not really hanging around with us right now. Okay. Okay. Um, then I've met Anunnaki and they actually have wings, you know? All right. They have wings. <laughs> okay. And uh, I got to touch one once. I was on a big, big, big uh, planet, you know, it was a, it's where I went to go learn and everything. And they had big conferences center on, on the planet itself. And uh, I saw two or three of them and I was young and I'm not afraid of anything. And I ran up to them <laughs> like a magnet. Okay. <laughs> I went to that show. <laughs> and he okay. gave, did this and he let me pet him, <laughs> pet his wing. Okay. And I was just screaming. I was just like, oh, you know. Uh, so there's them. There's the Anunnaki. They're huge, by the way. This guy was eight okay. feet tall. Easy. Huge. Okay. Okay. Then they're the, what some people here refer to as the Nordics, the tall whites. Right. They're very old. They're the scientific nerdiest of them all. And okay. they pretty much are watching our physical situation in the solar system. and. They're on Earth a lot, and they're very, they're very standoffish. You, you don't mess with them. They have a very, very serious uh, uh, societal construct, and uh -huh. it's just a really good idea not to worry about talking to them too much. They're, they're, okay. they're very um, protective of their young, and they live a long, long, long time. Uh, so there's them. Uh, then there's the mantis, mantids. I've actually right. only seen one in my entire life and it freaked me out. I had to have a kidney transplant and um, it was watching me. And I was in the house alone. It was a bad galing winds that day. It was near Savannah and I'm looking out the door and I'm thinking, what the heck? And I had a little, you know, it's way back when we had the flip phones, little Motorola's uh -huh. terrible camera. And I tried to, you know, zoom up on him, which <clears throat> laughable and get pictures. And I took about six and then he stood up because he was crouching down there, a big stump. <laughs> I just, you know, you know, I was like, I dropped my phone. I threw the door open barefoot. It's cold. I'm wearing shorts, you know, okay. and I hauled ass. I went right after him. Okay. Uh, me and he, like, ah. <laughs> he walked away. He didn't run or anything. He was that fast. And he okay. walked off into a big field and disappeared and I couldn't keep up with him. I just had a transplant. Okay. Who could okay. run after that after transplant? And I was sure I got one mental message from him and he said, we are the watchers. I'm watching over you. And it was a very loving message. Made me okay. feel good all over my whole body. And I was like, oh, and I okay. st stood there, you know, thinking about it hard. That's an excruciating wake up call to anybody when you see them. Okay. It's like, oh my God, they're not like a real, real bug. Like you think of mantids here. They have right. skin, right. they have arms and legs. They, I mean, they do, they do hold their hands a certain way, but I could see appendages, you know? Okay. Yeah, okay. And uh, he had, uh, had, he had really big bulgy eyes. He did have that. And, uh, this like, long, you know, his face came to a kind of a point, but he had lips and he could move them. Okay. I could see him working his mouth. Um, I think it was, you know, I don't know if he was trying to talk or whatever, but he was um, moving his mouth. Um, are there any that like you would, and, and I'm not going to say that. How can I tell you this? Because you hear reports that there's some that are friendly towards us, others that are, and I don't want to say unfriendly, but that see us more as, 
You know, when, some, when you're studying something that you're really like, all of them, they might be intrusive. Yeah, I met one thing out in the glades. I used to go out to the, you know, the where the Indian burial mounds out in the glades, make it yes. Indian. Okay. Yes. And it, it's more that it's the Seminoles and the way we way, way back. Okay. Right. So I was I was on this one mound an entire day and a half, and I had to canoe to it because you know how it is. Yes. Um. Uh. Anyway, so I was packing up. I was packing down my camp and. I was getting ready to leave and I felt the hair go up on the back of my neck. You know, you get that somebody's watching me and yeah. I turned around, you know, I turned to my right and over my right shoulder, about 20 feet behind me is a being I've never big guy. And I call them lizard people. I did not know y'all call them what reptilians. I did yeah. not know you called them anything. And the only thing he had on his mind was I was lunch. Okay. I didn't hesitate. I didn't wait. I dropped everything and ran like a banshee for the water, grabbed my canoe. I didn't even get in my canoe. I got out of there as fast as I could paddling for my life. Uh, okay. I didn't go back for a whole month. I was terrified of him. This is, this terrified me. Okay. This okay. was no, not playing with you. I've gone over and over and over and over. I was a teenager when this happened. Okay. Um, I've heard stories since then. I've heard people talking about it. There's two schools of thought, blah, blah. From what I've understand about our history and our solar system and everything, I really believe that they're from here. I think they are the original residents of this planet, along with dinosaurs. Really? Yeah. Okay. I think they're from here. And I think that- well, you, know, uh, it, it, you know, what's really incredible is that, you know, now with DNA, you know, that the genome and stuff, yeah. they're realizing that hominids, you know, that basically, uh, contrary to what they thought, modern man or, you know, whatever original- uh, interbred with all these different versions of hominids, including Neanderthals. As a matter of fact, right. when I did my pie chart, I'm three percent Neanderthal. Who oh, yeah. That's I remember cool. at one point yeah. they always thought that none of these, in other words, they've realized that what makes up modern humans as a now, yes, is a lot of different uh, sources. Many of them, of course, it's, died the, out. it's, it's the it's the human genome. Right. Human. But they thought that none of these different groups of hominids ever interbred you know genetically they thought no they didn't yeah. even neanderthals they said you know even though they overlapped in time which goes to show that really they're not really sure exactly what we're made up of exactly we're made up of a lot of stuff you realize yeah. that the ets are our progenitors i've said that before i'm gonna uh -huh. say it again our entire universe uh the template is in your body in your dna every okay. living thing every biological thing as DNA, animals, bugs, fish, dolphins, whales, octopus, birds, all of it. We all have DNA and we're actually very closely related to one another. Our DNA resembles right. quite literally, phantasmagorically, yes. ETs have the something. same DNA. Preston, okay. because you mentioned that earlier that their interest in us, the extraterrestrial, is because of genetics. Yeah, partly. I mean, this speaks to the book, you know, the title of the book, uh -huh. uh, which D Dolly actually chose the title. I asked her, you know, do you have any titles in mind? I was really hoping to call it Dolly Among the Stars because it is a true adventure, okay. uh, which we ended up using for one of the chapters. But she says, you know, I'd really like to call it Symmetry. I thought, okay. wow, you know, that is an intriguing word. And I started thinking about what it meant. And I'm like, why? And this turned out to be one of the big lessons she had learned from her studies with the ETs, that there is a symmetry to life throughout the universe. Okay. And Dolly says, you know, you, we are you, you are us. I can't tell We're you how many one. times I've heard that <laughs> yeah, from other contactees. Okay. And pretty much without exception, when someone says they see an ET, it is humanoid. It's human in form. And we're talking about people have, you know, seeing half human, half gray uh, hybrids, mm -hmm. uh, which speaks to, again, their relationship to us and how close we are to them. Uh, so it is all about genetics. I like the uh, word, the fact that you used the word bipedal. We are all bipedal. You realize that, right? Right. Okay. That just explains- Let me ask you something. Is there any truth that sometimes you hear that they're interested in us not, um, for genetics, but because they lack some of it? Is there any truth? To no, that? no. Um, 
when you when you're a space bearing race of people, you spend a lot of time outside of a protected magnetosphere on your planet. Mm -hmm. uh, you take on a lot of gamma radiation. Okay. And the eons that they've been doing this has affected their DNA and uh, degraded it somewhat. And uh, they are constantly battling that issue. That's why they have little AI grays to protect them from being out in space space too much. When I go off with Talata, we do not stay in space. We go where we're going, we get the heck down into a planet's magnetosphere. We don't spend the mm, 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 mm. But I'm telling you every time even I go out in space, I become radioactive because I'm taking on heavy counts of gamma radiation. When you fly in a jet, you're taking on heavy counts of gamma. You realize that, right? No, I did not know that. Yes. I did. I, I, um, yeah. Our own astronauts understand that. Uh, they fanned out very fast and they proved that, you know, the two astronauts who are identical twins, Mm -hmm. Well, they, yes. can't, they deliberately kept one on the ground and they put one up for just over a year. And when he came back, they realized without beyond the shadow of a doubt, there's no doubt in anybody's mind anymore. It derazzes your DNA. It degrades it. Okay. And wow. it, all this time, he's been his DNA has been trying to come back up, but he no longer matched his brother genetically when he hit the ground. Isn't and that, that interesting? Yeah. And what it, a great it, way to compare it, I guess, an identical twin. Right. It it de-evolves your body somewhat, you know. We're having problems because our magnetosphere is down for the last 80 yes, years. I know it started that. I know that. And I know everybody asks themselves, rapidly. why do we have so much cancer? What, what's with the autoimmune disorders? Why are we having so much mental dis issues? Why are people breaking down with all these different kinds of cancers? And uh, quite frankly, it's the gamma hitting us. That's why. Right. And if you want to know why ET makes contact with everybody on this planet, they're watching it happen to us and they're trying to help us not suffer from it. They are helping us by repairing us, healing us. They do all kinds of things for us all the time. They're keeping us going. You know, right. they're also breeding back with us with the hybrid program to strengthen their DNA back up because believe me, they've taken some terrible hits from gamma. Let me ask and, you, it, and, and I don't know if you're aware yeah. You know, you always think of space travel as in light years, but then you hear about the theory of inter or intradimensional um, travel. Is that how they're doing it? Or yes, how are they yes. Okay. Um, um, I know you don't see this because you're in a, a gravity heavy world. Yes. The physical world that we all and dwell on, and it's throughout our universe, by the way. It's not just here. Our entire universe is a physical construct that's a mainframe. For us okay. to dwell in, okay? At this uh, level of, uh, you know, uh, dimension, we're, we're in the lower dimensions here, okay? There's okay. a dimension above us that still has gravity and uh, time, you know, a timeline. Okay. Everything above the fifth dimension is lost all that. It, it, you go outside space-time past the fifth okay. dimension. Okay, so... You don't realize this because there's so much going on in your lifetime and everybody's that you don't see it, but you're, you're a being of light. Just because you're gravity heavy and you feel dense and heavy doesn't That's mean me. that you're actually made out of light. You have the energy of light. That's how you were made. That's how your DNA formed. You're, you're an electromagnetic being of light. And uh, so, yes, they travel interdimensionally. They create okay. uh, an opening in the dimensional, in a dimensional wall. It's light. It's a light okay. wall. They open that door and they go through it. They've already decided where they're going. They okay. know how to mm -hmm. mentally make that happen. And they go through that door and their parsecs cross the universe when they do it instantly. They can go instantly anywhere they want to go by using that right. light doorway. Mm -hmm. okay. Because when you go into an interdimensional field, you become interdimensional as well. You lose all your solidity and you're able to pass through it very rapidly. So, yeah. Right. And so how did you and Preston get together for the story? To for Was it coincidence or how did that? Because nowadays I'm thinking, did the ETs guide them to me or? Yeah, kind of. Um, uh, I'm very psychic, Marlene. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> but yeah, seven, eight years ago, I decided that I'm coming out. Okay. I okay. know what my mission is. I'm well aware of everything that's going on. And I just couldn't sit still for it anymore. I can't. I'm human as you are. I'm a hybrid human, but I'm human. This is my home. I was right. born here. Okay. And I'm very, very much in love 
with all of us, okay? okay. I'm gonna live with you too, but we matter too, okay? And I sat down with them and and said, okay, I'm gonna do this. What do I what do I do? Am I allowed to? Okay. I was gonna say, didn't they say no, 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 no? Wait, whoa, whoa, slow down, Dolly. You Everybody do stared at me really hard. I mean, they all just sat back and were just like, hmm. And uh, I was debriefed about it. I was told what was going to happen. In other words, what I could expect, how people were going to react to me, what I okay. faced danger-wise, that kind of thing. The okay. world's uh, the people who run this joint aren't happy about it at all. Okay. Um, and then I started, well, well, now what do I do? And it was suggested to me that I find somebody to tell my story to. Okay. And I went out and I started looking around for researchers and I was very unhappy with who I was running into. I was disappointed. I was like, no, because I was raised to only tell the truth. ET okay. does not lie ever. They're okay. capable of it. When you're a full wide open psychic, you hear everything. You hear the lie. Okay. And okay. they won't tolerate it. And I'm getting more and more and more disappointed. I'm spending a year doing this, twiddling my thumbs, thinking. <sighs> and Talata finally one day says, you know what? I want you to check this guy out. And I said, who? He said, Preston Dennett. And he's on YouTube. Are you kidding me? Oh, see, I was. <laughs> I was right. <laughs> Aha, you were. He, he, they said his name. And I'm like, okay, he's on YouTube, okay? So I went out on YouTube and I put in the search bar, Preston Dennett. Okay. There he was. I found one of his first videos. He was uh, doing a MUFON symposium or something like that. He was talking about healing. He was way younger than he is now. And uh, it caught he caught my eye. Okay. I have to tell you that. He was like a little cutie. And I was like, okay, eye candy. And I start listening to him. And I realized, oh, my God, he knows what he's doing. He tells the truth. Okay. He's very into facts and order of things. And he he doesn't make up stories about people. He tells He's very good at what's the word? Keeping to the net the narrative of what everybody's saying. Okay. And he okay. researches like crazy. You could tell he does his homework. Okay. And I said, okay, okay, okay. So at the bottom of the video, I see his email. Uh Preston okay. UFO dot bell or something like that. Okay. And uh so I emailed him and I said, I'm interested in talking to you about my story and would you would you talk to me? Can we have a conversation? And he said, sure. I mean, he, within an hour, he was emailing me back. I was like, wow, this is kind of cool. And uh, I gave him my phone number, and he called me, I guess, two days later, and it was on from there. This was about six and a half years ago, seven years ago. It'll be seven years ago in this this end of July. Yeah. So, so yeah. wow. Yeah. Yeah, how's and, that? Yeah. Okay, so in other words, I see I see he passed the litmus test because I'm sure that you were like when you started, you were like, I'm ready for to be disappointed again. I was absolutely, and, then, and it was shocked. Okay. I was very shocked. Uh, isn't that interesting? Yeah, because you were like, and they let me ask you, have there been periods of time where they haven't contacted you at all? And then they come back, or has it always been on a steady pace? Uh, up until about uh, three months ago, it was a steady pace. They bugged out right now. They are no longer on this planet. They are not in our solar system at all. They had to bug out. Uh, the entire solar system is changing its magnetic polarity, and Earth's is so bad they can't fly here right now, and they've bugged out. It's too dangerous for them. They're out of our system. They really? do talk to me psychically. I can remote view them and OBE them. Mm -hmm. uh, but stuff's happening because Talata has uh, gone dead silent on me a couple of times in the last few weeks. And then when he comes okay. back, he's saying it's getting busy. It's getting hot. And I'm like, okay. you know. Now, if I yeah. want somebody right now, oh, trust me, mama will get on with me instantly. She'll come on board and you okay. know remote me because uh, I'll, <laughs> I'll cry for her and she'll show up. But no, they're not physically with us right now. So I'm, I'm, I'm a little out of my. Let me ask you something, you know, Dolly. During all these years, even though it sounds like they were helping you and guiding you, do they also believe, like, in free will? In other words, absolutely, they're autonomous beings, and they believe in our autonomy. They are right. progenitors. They put us here. Okay, they brought mm -hmm. us here. But we have free will and we have the ability to make our own decisions about our own lives. We all have karma. That is a constant in the universe. 
Okay, right. karma right. is real, dead up real. That's why they're not rescuing every stupid thing we do. We well, have to learn this. You know, the reason why I brought that up is because some people think that ET, you know, contact with an ET is like the they become like they don't let anything bad happen to you. You know, you're safe from responsibility. No, from no. doing stupid stuff. <laughs> Hello, <You're right. laughs> and yeah. and I'm thinking, well, you know what? That kind of defeats the purpose of being alive. That's really my most important lessons at first with them when I was very young was morality, um, yeah. uh, uh, ethics, you know, mm -hmm. uh, contact in that um, with one another, psychic ability training, that kind of thing. Because um, we are not, we are all of us, each individual person is responsible for what you say, do, feel, think, act, all of it. You can't blame anybody but yourself for your own stuff. OK, yeah. we affect one another. We are each other. We are supposed to help each other. We're supposed to be available to one another and we're supposed to love one another. Sure. Uh, this particular realm that we're in, this world, this system is kind of screwed up right now. I mean, there's a lot of and, and, and here's the reality of it. OK, you're an eternal being. You've been around for a long time. You've lived multiple lifetimes, in multiple universes, mm -hmm. universes, plural. This universe is this one. Right. There are others. Okay. But our universe has 12 dimensions and this is our construct and this is where we are right now. Okay. You're responsible for your own wisdom, yes. you, your own learning, your own learning the truth, accepting or denying everything. Okay. That's what autonomy is. You are doing for yourself what you need to do. Because everything, the reason you're here, what karma is, is you're here to experience that which you cannot experience in source and where that experience is wisdom to get smarter, to raise how you think. Right. Well, um, I, I think of it as that life is supposed to be messy because. Right. That's, that's how, how we you learn. Experience. You make mistakes, right. you learn. Yeah. You there's know, no guarantee it isn't going to hurt. Um, right. There's no guarantee to be that you're going to be happy. Hey. How about you, Preston? After you met Dolly and you guys are talking and she's telling you, did did you ever have any weird experiences? Were they coming to check out on you and make sure is is he <laughs> is he really the right person for this? Um yeah, yeah. I became a per participant okay. uh, to a certain extent in Dolly's own adventures. And okay. I will say that. Uh, I have been having sightings myself. Okay. With some telepathic communication. Okay. Uh, you know, not just one sighting. I mean, like a dozen. Some okay. very close up. I did have a missing time incident. Really? Uh, and uh, Dolly, you know, we've done a lot of interviews. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, 100 hours easily. And so it was a lot of fun because Dolly is psychic. <laughs> okay. And uh, it was... I, I learned that early on. Okay. Um, and I myself have had a lot of psychic experiences, uh, right. particu particularly out of body experiences, which I got really good at, actually. Okay. And so one day, just on a whim, I popped over to Dolly's house. I thought, hmm, you know, maybe because I've, I've done this, you know, this is something I'm really good at. And okay. uh, I, I would go to people's houses and then they can never ever see me. I'm like, well, you know, I don't know. Sometimes I think I'm like just crazy. This okay. could be dreams. I know it's not, but it's frustrating. Uh -huh. And so one day I just popped over to Dolly's house looking for her, and there she was. <laughs> and this was like the middle of the night, certainly for her, because she's you know on the East Coast and I'm here on the West Coast. And uh, she turns around and looks straight at me. <laughs> and, and she's on the phone. You know, and, and, and I, I, can, I can see her eyes go wide. <laughs> She's looking at me. It's like and I'm, I'm, I'm like, wow. And, and she says, Preston, like, oh, you know, I, so... I can't talk now. I'm being robbed. He thought I like, said that, yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought she said. But I was like, what? <laughs> which, which, which freaked me out, of course, and then pulled me right back into my body and I wake up the next day and we're talking daily at this point. Uh -huh. And uh, she calls me up and we're start talking. I'm like, well, she's not bringing up being robbed. This is something she, <laughs> she would definitely mention first thing. <laughs> but... but then she says, you came to me last night. I saw you. I'm like, you did. Cause I saw you see me <laughs> and you that... said something to me. What did you say? 
I want to know because I, you know, I'm always, I want to verify, you know, facts, facts, facts. And she says, well, yeah, I was on the phone <laughs> and uh, I saw you and I said, I can't talk now. I'm on the phone with Rob. I'm like, oh, <laughs> Rob. Okay. I misunderstood. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so, and, you know, we met at the convention at a UFO convention last year uh-huh. and, and Talata came down. Wow. Uh, so I've gotten, to, you know, and I'm starting to have more memories of being you know, on craft, I guess. Memories, well, dreams, I'll call them dreams, but I kind of know they're not. Okay. I'm, I'm kind of remembering the stuff in the dream state. I'm starting to sort of, she's helping me with my own like issues with d- trying to remember and deal with this. Right. Uh, so yeah, absolutely. There's a connection there. <laughs> Let me ask you something, Dolly. You mentioned earlier that you were a nurse. Yes. Uh, when you were nursing, did you ever feel or see any ET presence that was with a patient? I guess is what I'm asking. Like, um, um, I worked in an ER, and uh, oh. it's uh, busy. Um, yes, I see entities all the time i see you know like what you would call a ghost stuff like that. right okay i do see ets walking around every now and then as i stated they do obe and when they do i see them i can communicate with them um i've seen all different kinds of entities obe not just nursing but in my everyday life um yes so yes and i Um, I have seen them actually come and uh, we had a patient this one, this one was traumatic for me because it was a patient who was going to die. We knew it, okay. and this, they were there for him. And they, okay. when he left, they walked him. Are we still there? Yeah, I'm here. Oh no! What the hell? Was that? Oh, the hell your camera going? froze. But yeah. yeah but can, anyway, go ahead. Yeah, the, the ETs ahead. are all about healing. They really are. And Dolly has been healed herself on more than one occasion. And uh, it's kind of her job when she's on board, when she's right. not flying the craft, because they, they scoop people up and give them checkups. Well, and you know, the reason why I'm, I, I asked her is that I was thinking, do they, you know, let's say somebody like her, that they've been with them, you know, all through their lives. And now this person, I didn't know she was in the emergency room, but they're either in the hospital for something that do they come and say okay we need to check on this person that we've been with all this time uh and i'm thinking that she like like oh here's somebody that's checking in on this patient because they that's their connection between that et and this person but she's gonna she right right tolly's calling me right now actually (laughs) i think she got bumped out (laughs) she can come back in um Oh, all right. Um, I think we're going to be on another half hour or so. Don't if tell her if she's that she. That... All right, she. You're trying to get back in. Got it. Okay. Well, we'll, right. we'll bring her back yeah. in. Yeah. What well, happened? Her connection dropped. Yeah, her computer did something. Kicked her out. It's trying to yeah. reboot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, I'm telling you. Um, but there was yeah. something about that question. I'm just. Kidding. Hey, I. <laughs> No, I'm not going to discount it. Weird stuff happens. Yeah, I know. That's what I was going to say. I know people say, what? And it's like, hey, it's like, of all the things, it's like, what were you talking about at the moment that <laughs> that, that thing went south? Yeah. So, yeah, But I would just reiterate that healing is a major primary ET agenda. I did actually write a book called The Healing Power of UFOs, mm-hmm. which documents some 300 cases. Okay. And, and Dolly was healed of, I mean, she hurt her knee really bad once and uh, they, she just okay, couldn't take go. it. And all right, they... Dolly, come on, come on and put on your, because <laughs> I'm seeing you, you can start your cam. Okay. I'm hoping it starts. Hang on a second. Oops. You're in the show. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> well, <laughs> hang on a second. Let's see what, why it's being so fruitless. Give it a second. I'm sure it'll come back on. That's what it usually does. Okay. 
But yeah, Dolly has been present on board when other people have been healed as well. Okay. So, so something you know, as a nurse, she's often there to like help people through their onboard experience because as a you know general rule, people live in fear. Sure. Uh, and this is a big part of you know what we need to overcome is learning how to overcome fear. Okay, I'm gonna try people. one more time. I'll be right Go ahead. Back. Go ahead. <laughs> This is, this is what's blocking people from having fully conscious experiences. This is what causes them to view their experience, you know, through the lens of fear and think this is bad for me. It's not. They are trying well, to check up on you. I think there's or, also that big fear of the unknown, like uh, people. It's like, you know, especially if you're one of these people that wants to live in this very, uh, that you know what to expect. Okay, let's see. Let's cross our fingers on this and see what we can get. All right. All right, Dolly, you're in. Go ahead and see if we can get your cam going. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's nothing like a UFO experience to sort of shatter your worldview. <laughs> well, exactly, exactly, exactly. Because see, one thing is that you see it on the movies or on the TV shows, and you kind of, ah, oh, you know, I I've read about it, but that's quite different from an actual. Yeah acceptance of that experience because then i think for a lot of people it'll be like well if this is possible what else that i've relegated to the never never land of possibilities is possible if this is extraterrestrial contact uh all of that they, they, they don't want to go there like their mind is <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah I'm having a hard time. It's you doing what it did to you. It, Dolly, if anything, we'll just, you can just talk. We're, talk. We can hear you. Okay. No problem. Um, anyway, we were talking about that, you know, how to ask you and and uh, about the nursing and the ETs and Preston was explaining about also uh, incidents of healing yes. that you yourself have experienced. Oh, uh, yeah. Quite a few. Um, I've bashed my knee really bad. Okay. I mean, broke it bad and yeah, um, had an ACL well. tear in it that was uh, going to lay me out in lavender. I used to be a swimmer as well. Right. You know, I love to swim. And uh, they they had something to do with helping me facilitate that as a perfect um, repair. You know, I have perfect 100% use of my knee now because of that. Oh, you're back. Great. Yeah. Hi. You yeah. know what? And I know last year I had, it was a minor. I twisted my knee a little bit. I stepped in a mud puddle and I did one of those, you know, where you try to not to like fall. And I did, yes. and that is very painful. It took months for me to like, yes. to be able to put weight on it. And I looked like Quasimodo, like dragging my foot behind me, you know, because I couldn't like <laughs> put weight on it. And ugh, it was. It had it was me in a crazy. hip cast. It went all the way up to the top of my hip and all the way down oh. to my ankle, and I couldn't bend my leg at all. And it was one of those you remember those old casts, and mm -hmm. it started itching and it drove me insane. And I jumped in the tub and soaked it right off my leg. And they, I did it twice. He kept putting it back on. I kept saying, "I'm only going to take it off. It won't last." And so he found me a the one of the very first Velcro casts, you know, it's like a hard plastic with Velcro on it. And he finally said, "Will you live with this?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I can take it back now." Okay. So. Okay. So I wore that. I was in a cast yes, for like I know eight weeks. The yeah. injuries are, they're horrific. So they hurt. Here you said, oh, absolutely. <laughs> Believe me, I know. <laughs> Let me ask you, you mentioned something that everybody has kind of like, did they ever tell you if, when, or how they would decide to come back? Or, yes. Or is that yeah. like unknown? No, it's part of my mission, actually. Um, when I said okay. I wanted to learn to fly, I didn't know what I was getting into, and then I found out. Um, okay. Our solar system is not a happy camper right now. We're... Uh, changing our poles during an excursion, our magnetosphere is down. Our sun is in uh, maximum, solar maximum, and mm -hmm. it's throwing some pretty potent CMEs out right now, coronal mass ejections. Right. Um, if we have a, an X class, which they are predicting we will, uh, we're done for here. It will send us all back to the Stone Age. I don't know okay. if you know what the Carrington event is. You might want to look it up. Okay. This is coming, and when we go back to the Stone Age, Lots going to be happening. There's going to be hunger. 
Houses yeah. are going to be burning to the ground because every wire on the planet's going to burn. Uh, it's just crazy stuff. The irony of this is that our governments know about it all over the world. Right, I've, heard, I've heard of that. I've, I've heard of different versions of that happening yeah. and how we're so dependent on technology that we've lost all our ability to survive. Uh, yeah. Well, the with, government thinks they're going underground. Okay. They, ha they have built everything that they need. It's already, they're stocking it now. That's why there's a world fu world food shortage. They I guess they've got it to where they want it. Now they're going to start doing things to us. This is the 1% that want to survive and mm -hmm. they don't care about us. And they're going to make it very hard for us to survive all this. And um, ET cannot be here for the CME. They cannot. They cannot be anywhere near our solar system. It will take them out as well. They are electromagnetically oriented. They use graviton wave technology and it will destroy them. It can't be here. So the plan is this. Um, once that uh, CME hits us and it knocks us out. Right. Um, you've got about a year and a half, year, year and a half mm -hmm. uh, to survive until they come back. By the way, when that CME hits, every satellite in the sky is coming down. They so all, already know about all it. The hundreds of junk that's orbiting around the earth, you mean? Oh, going to come down. Do you know that they're going to bring the ISS down before it happens? They're going to bring it into a controlled descent so they can drop it in the deepest part of the ocean so it doesn't hit them or any of their stuff, okay, which it could. If it's right, exactly. Stuff. Yeah, that's what uh, happens when one of these It's on the NASA satellites. website. Go look at it. Look up Google keyword in at the NASA site, ISS, um, you know, the end of ISS, and it will show you that they're bringing it down. They are lying about it, but yeah, okay, why they're going to bring it down. Um, so you have to survive all that. Once that happens and it's clear enough for them to come down, every ET craft that you could possibly imagine will hit the planet worldwide. Every runway, every street, every airport, every parking lot, everywhere we got a place to put her down, we're coming. We will open the door. She will already psychically know we're coming because you will be told. Let they will send a message. Get ready. I don't even know how many satellites are orbiting, how much junk we've got orbiting the Earth right now. Oh it's, yeah, if you pull up a map, it's like crazy. The earth looks black. I mean it's covered like ant Yeah. Hell. There's a big huge neural net up there. Yeah. There's a lot, you know. Uh sadly. And um but that's what's gonna happen. I, I don't wanna talk about this in a negative light, okay? Uh for two reasons. First off, is that you're an eternal being. Whether you survive this or not doesn't matter because you're still going to be alive and you're still going to go on. You'll recycle. You will become, you'll, your karma will take you somewhere else and you will be reborn somewhere else to finish out your karma. Uh, there is no... You know, uh, most people, though, yeah. have an instinct of self-preservation that you don't... Well, you've been taught to. That's one of the main the things that they've been going after you for. They make your life more important than anything else. They want you to live a perfect cushy oh you yeah. you know they're petting everybody it's okay they're talking about yeah. you know yes yes it's ridiculous yes. okay they it's don't tell you the truth it's ultimately oh. really good news because the w pathway we're on <laughs> with the greed and the corruption and the divisiveness and oh the wars yeah. this has got to stop it's not sustainable right. well i think that um and i hate to say it but uh, what was the other day that I was talking to? And I remember once upon a time, maybe a, two, three, four generations back, three people were, I don't know, how do I want to say they were more, how do, hardy is not the word for it, but people were more self. Well, your DNA wasn't being effed up. Okay. Maybe so that's it. number one. You know, you are, you, people were more independent. <laughs> you were more, more psychic then too. Your pineal gland wasn't being killed. Right. They, they, oh. people were like, yeah. oh, um, they thought of solutions hands-on without technology, right. in other words, Correct. to come and save the day. I want to give um, you this message, okay? I think it's time. I want to get this in before you have to go. Go ahead. Okay? Absolutely. Yes, go. ET's main message to everybody on this planet is to wake up. You have an innate ability to be psychic, as psychic as they are. You have an okay. innate ability to use the same abilities they already have, like levitation, like psychometry, like precog, all of it. You have those abilities. 
You are a powerful, sentient, eternal being. You've been denied that in this lifetime, this last 80 years. You've been punched, kicked, poisoned, you name it, for your pineal gland to die. The number one thing that'll hit you hard, pineal gland-wise, is uh, fluoride. Fluoride, carbon, yeah, CO, fluoride and it's for the pineal gland. Okay, stop it. Detox, clear your mind, meditate every day. Start learning to use your psychic ability. I'm going to give you the very first that I believe is a good tool, okay? Go ahead. Everybody write this down. Everybody get on it. Use it every day. It is uh, uh, Russell Targ when it, uh, worked for the government, but he was unbelievably psychic and he knew how to make this work. It's a game. You can download it on your iPhone or your Apple or your PC. Okay. And it is called Psychic Trainer. Use okay. it every day. Practice Meditate twice a day, every day. Start developing your own ability, you. And please, in the name of God, get away from all the negative. Turn off your TV. Get away from all the bad stuff. Leave it alone. Drink mm -hmm. fresh, clean water, pure water, whatever. Do whatever it takes to cleanse yourself, mind, body, mm -hmm. and soul, and get it all working again. Because you are sent, you are capable of all of this. If you want to hear ET, before they come down, because they're going to send a mental message to everybody. And if you hear it, you'll know to go with them. Okay. If you don't hear it, you won't. And there will be no communication devices then. The only way you're going to hear them is psychically. Right. Okay. Please, please, I implore everybody within the sound of my voice, please start waking up and realize two things. You are being lied to. You are treated like a slave. Get off the slave train. Take care of yourself and learn to hear the truth. For yourself, educate yourself as much as you can. Learn as much as you can. Of course, I had put it on yeah. silent, but no, of course, yeah. <laughs> no, but you know, I have a bypass for one of my kids yeah. who are adults, but still, right. you know right. what I'm talking about. <laughs> yes, yes, but yeah, but it's that's their main message. They want us to catch up with them. We are their children, and we were supposed to be catching up with them. We were supposed to be way more advanced than we are now. And we've been held back on purpose because of right. evil. Well, I think ideas. that, that the, it, I, I don't want to put down technology. Don't get me wrong. I know technology has brought a lot of comfort. I, I get it. But I think it's been a double-edged sword. And it makes us feel like we are advancing the right? technology. But, but I understand exactly what you mean. In reality, Technology is trying to do mechanically what they do innately. They have exactly. that power on and their it's own. Like, yeah. And it's like, you know what? Um we become too dependent on it too. And if it's, that's not there, then we're like, Oh my God, what do I, I can't function. You know, I, I, I want to give yeah. a perfect example. And I'm sure Dolly's going to understand this. When I grew up. All right. We only had air conditioning in our bedrooms that we would turn on <laughs> at night. We didn't have any. At yeah. night. Right. Okay. Yeah. The rest of the time we had a fan on at the right. door. And right. you know what? And when I went to school, I went to uh, in uh, Immaculate Conception in oh. in, uh, in Hialeah. Right, they yeah. didn't have air conditioning in the, no. in the classrooms. They just had the west. tall windows. Right. And right. you know those um, the schools designed in South Florida that were open air, open hallway, so that they right. Would that's let. what we had. Yeah. You know what? I never, I, I never died. I never fell. Oh my God! I can't take the heat. I did it. It was perfect. I was fine. Right. Now I'm a wimp. If there's no air conditioning, <laughs> I'm right. like. Oh, oh my yeah. God, yeah. I need to get into the AC. I grew up yeah. all my life. And then Practice night, going off red because you're going to need to. A wall unit, you know, I'm going to yeah. need a window unit at night yeah. to go to sleep gonna, the rest of the time. It was fine. <laughs> I'm going to give you a little hope, okay? Um, yeah. Our planet has been reacting to this excursion and the sun is bombarding us with gamma radiation. Um, our poles are not me melting because of quote unquote greenhouse gases, okay? Global warming is not a problem. It is not the problem. What is the problem is this core of our planet is heated up. The magma is hot, very hot, hotter than usual. And we're breaking free of our mantle. And there's a lot of friction going on. There's a lot of all kinds of stupid things are going to happen to this planet, okay? Okay. Um, but the poles melted. <laughs> and that's kind of good news. You want to know why? Because all that fresh water melt went straight into the Atlantic and every other ocean on this planet that it could get to. It stopped the hot engine because it's the evaporation 
and the movement of hot water through our seas that makes the temperature change. I'll give you a for instance, El Nino and La Nina. Those two operate the heat okay. in the in the northern United States, in the southern, all around in the Pacific as well. Um, those that engine's been shut off, and you're going to start to see it getting colder and colder and colder because guess what? We are headed for another ice age. Luckily, it won't be hitting when you leave, but when we leave, mm -hmm. but it's coming. It will happen. So don't worry about it. You're not going to be hot anymore. Promise. You people, know, that, people don't realize that people when they think of an ice age, they think a long term. All you need is a couple of years of or three years of an ice age as far as food production is concerned. Right, and and the effects yeah. are horrible. It doesn't right. have to be an age, yeah. as in yeah. you know, an era. Yeah. For it to well, be devastating. The timeline for this is that seam is gonna hit within about two years, okay, maybe two and a half on the outside. Uh, it was, I was saying three last year, now we're down to two, okay? And uh, so it's not long. And then you've got the the world governments are deliberately messing with people. They're deliberately starting a war. They're deliberately taking away our food sources. They're deliberately doing all kinds of stupid things. Please ask yourself why. See the truth of that. Why would they do that? Why? Because you're a problem when that CME hits, because we all can figure out where they are and we're going to be fighting them for it. They do not want the competition. Understand? Say something. That's a very, yeah. that's very interesting, Dolly. Because right that when it comes down to everybody is like, they want to survive and. Uh, we're going to go back cost. to barbarianism. It's survival of the fittest point blank. Literally. I hate to say it, but you, you know, warlords, because that's basically what it devolves into. Yeah, you know, well, I guarantee talking. you that are lots of people like me who already know this have known it for some time. You know what a prepper is? They're not yes. stupid. And they got they have the ability to defend themselves. Yes. Stay away from them. They will end you. Okay? Without thinking about something. it. I yeah. think that how can I tell you? And I don't know if it's because again, I grew up in South Florida, you know, we have hurricanes and stuff like that. Right. So <laughs> I understand what yeah. it is that you have to be self sufficient. You understand right. what I'm saying? Yes, exactly. Was raised um, the same way. Yep. Even though I think a lot of people, like I said, because we've been put into this mindset of being, uh, we've lost that ability to think. I got to take care of myself, and I got to yeah. like not well, only I can I tell you on all levels, spiritually, mentally, yeah. um, physically, it's like yeah. a combo package, and we've kind of like thrown that out Forgotten the window. That. Yeah. See, I knew if I was talking to a Floridian, this would come up. Thank you. Because yes. we were raised this way. All yeah. of us in Florida. We know. We're tough noodles because of that. Okay. I mean, we know what happens when you don't have water. We know what happens when you don't have electricity. We know we're not stupid. We've been there, done that, got the t-shirt multiple times. Yeah. You know, yeah. we know how to yeah. survive. Yeah. I mean, uh, we had, um, even though it was in Hialeah and they had city water, my grandparents yeah. put in a well. Damn they would use right. it to, for their yeah. lawn. Well, yeah. bottom line, you know, that yeah. well. Out, out in the glades, we only had sulfur water. You know, we were near the sulfur yes. spring. Yeah. And uh, uh -huh. I had to learn to survive on sulfur water. I was like, Ugh. water is water. It was good. Yeah. And, you know, an AM transistor radio and you're good to go with battery yeah. operated. Now they have hand crank ones. I'm going to yeah. start putting out stuff to teach you how to make a um, Faraday cage for your stuff. Some things yes. you might be able to save. Maybe. It just depends. It's, it's uh, not. It's not guaranteed, but there's ways of covering your things and burying them a certain way. Yeah, I've heard that. You know, you create a, very, a cradle. Yeah. yeah. And, um, uh, I think but I don't know if it's going to work or not. It just depends on how bad that CME is. Literally. You know what, when I think of that, you know, you know what movie I think about? Because unfortunately we relate to Hollywood, you know, that War yeah. of the Worlds, the modern one, the, the one oh. with Tom Cruise. Yeah, where yeah. The only Mm -hmm. Part that gets saved is the one because of the, yeah. the uh, yeah, everything yeah. is is basically cooked. Yeah, I will tell you this: there's a website that you can go on. Okay. Uh, it's uh, and uh, uh, Noah has one. Uh, just Google uh, the Daily um, Sun. Uh, what's going on with the sun? And it'll show you several. Yes, I know which one you're talking up. about. That it shows just, you the flares and it shows right. the. It'll warn yes. you when a bad one's coming. It'll tell you, okay, look, yeah. just pay attention to it. You know, bring it up on your computer or whatever and yes. pay attention. 
Yes, yeah. I know which yeah. one you're talking it's about. It's just basic common sense to you know have enough water for a month, you know, have yeah. enough food for yes. several yeah. months. It's right. not yes. that hard to do, even nice. if you have to get it a little bit at a time. Garden. You know, even if you're in oh, an yes. apartment, right. there are windows. Yeah. Chickens. You know? Yay. Yay. Yeah. Right. I might drive <laughs> down and meet you and get some chickens from you. I might like tell you something. I do this my husband all the time. Okay. Yeah. I go, pretty soon, you're going to have to sleep outside with a shotgun. And he's looking at me like, because these chickens are going to be like gold. Yep. And they will. <laughs> I know. I mean, and you can't tell them to like, shut up. Right. They won't. I know. It's amazing about chickens. Oh, my daughter wants yeah. to kill one right now. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, I have. A, uh, I, I don't call my chickens. I, all I have is, I, I'm a wimp that way. I'm, you know, with animals and stuff. Yeah. But I want you to promise me something. Sure. I want you to look up how to pull wire out of your house. When it time's coming, I will alert you. I promise. Okay. okay. You're right. gonna get Excellent. the wire out of your house. You're gonna throw away all the stuff that will burn it to the ground, because when that CME hits, it will burn you to the ground. So let's teach you how to get it out of there before that. Okay. Okay. You're going to go off grid. Okay. okay. All, right. All right. There's a reason ahead, so many people are going off grid now. <laughs> I think people are waking up. Off grid is right. a huge thing. I mean, there are t yeah. TV shows about it. It's yes, a very of course, popular of thing. Of course. Of course. Right. Because some people are waking up and, you know, the people, there's other people that make shows about it because they're making money from it, not because they're actually doing it. You know what I'm saying? And then right. there's the people that actually, um, right. Yeah, well, there's two reasons why this is coming, but look at what the governments are doing. We're facing well, some serious stuff. You need to be yeah. working this out now. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. Martin. Yeah. You know, and 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 I agree. Um, uh, people, we need smaller communities in the sense of neighbors. Helping each and, other. You know, right. like smaller communities. Yeah. Even what you were saying, as far as you know, if one does this, and if you're, you know, you grow vegetables, and the other one grows potatoes, and you know, whatever, and we're but they say this is the kind of thing that you need to have in place beforehand. Right. right. You know. Yes, because if you're starving, you're not going to think through it to do that at all. Oh, absolutely not. You know? Absolutely not. So no. everybody needs to hear that message. Start. You need to now. Now is now. Yes, absolutely. All right, guys. It has been absolutely wonderful to speak to you both. We've got to talk about this again. This is so interesting. We will. And I'm going to have a link to the to the, your website on the credits of the show but if you want to go ahead for my podcast listeners put out what is your website i don't know okay. dolly do you have a website no i, I didn't know, think that worry. through <laughs> no don't worry kinda, don't worry preston what's once your I settle. yeah um, yeah my website well if you just punch in my name it should take you there it's preston dennett.weebly.com okay uh, and the book symmetry is available on amazon you can also okay. review it and read excerpts on my website Okay. I've got a YouTube channel, Twitter, Instagram, you know, all that stuff. Okay. Dolly does have a little YouTube channel where she's put out some of the films okay. and photographs she's been able to take of yeah. Talada, who has graciously agreed <laughs> to okay. pose for a few pictures. Okay. Uh, because, you know, Dolly's story is amazing, but she does have the evidence to back it up. She's got corroboration from other witnesses. It matches pretty much exactly what I've been hearing from other people, very much piecemeal and through the lens of fear. But yeah, yeah I mean, everything she's telling me, I mostly yeah. have heard before and she's got evidence to prove it. Right. And don't discount the fact that ET is not physically here right now. You can still communicate with them. They keep in touch with us. They're okay. connected to us. If you want to talk to them, meditate, learn to use your ability and start talking okay. to them. Don't be shocked when they answer you. Okay. I can imagine some people jumping out of their shoes. <laughs> again guys thank you so much it's been absolutely wonderful to speak to you both take care you're welcome you thank too you. bye 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 wow oh boy I don't know what to say except, wow. <clears throat> I love talking to somebody that was living in South Florida during all the years that I was living there and gets it. You know, a lot of changes in that part of Florida. A lot. But um, it's really interesting to hear somebody that, that firsthand, because you, you hear people having at some point suspected 
either ET contact or being taken. But it's very, what can I say? Film, either they kind of remember some of it later in life or even what they the recovered memories are kind of chopped up. And in other words, they have memories of being taken or being taken on board or things that happen, but not the kind of, not what she, what Dolly's describing as far as the interaction with these beings, uh, knowing their names. Uh, in other words, that it wasn't just uh, always on a, on a, something I remembered, but an active relationship, I guess is the only way to look at it um, between her and these beings. Uh, and what they explain to her as far as what their interaction is with humans and also what their, I don't want to say their mission because I don't want to say it's a mission, but maybe, maybe the reason why they're here or are they observing us or in the case of what they explain that it's more than observation was their tweaking of our genetics uh, I don't know which way it would go. Is it one of them, all of them, some of them, you know, are some of them just watching us while others are actually interacting with us? Are there some that are taking um, the uh, genetic material from us, but not really like developing a relationship with us? Uh, or, or like what uh, she described, um, that reptilian, that, that reptilian uh, encounter that she described in the Everglades, because once upon a time, the Everglades basically came up to the west west end of Miami-Dade County. All right. Little by little, it got pushed further back because of uh, development. But what she's, the years that she's talking about, the Everglades, you were on the Everglades. And it makes you wonder, did this thing seek her out? Mm, how did it know it was there? I mean, or why was she, you know, it almost makes you, I, 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 part of me when she was describing that was, did this uh, choose her at that particular moment because she had a relationship with these other ETs? Almost like, you know how kids, I want what you got or, you know, or, or, or I guess what I'm thinking of is, is that's a, where she was talking about that she had that encounter with that reptilian was, it's a pretty remote area. Okay. And that this thing, was it happenstance or was she targeted because of maybe her relationship with the other ETs and it's. We want you, and I hate to think that what she was saying that, you know, with, uh, to eat her, God, that's pretty horrible. And one of the things that I forgot to ask her and I wish I had was when she, at the very beginning, she's describes how she comes back and she's got on different pajamas and they're on backwards. The first thing I think of is I'm sure you've heard of David Politis is a missing 411 and how he's described how some of these people or children, uh, the ones that are found, whether dead or alive in some cases, besides being found in places that it's like, she described that. He's described where sometimes their clothing is on backwards. Let's say your pants or your pajamas are on backwards. And then I think in a couple of cases, there was stuff where the clothing did not fit, weird stuff. And I thought, wow, God, this sounds exactly the same thing, like exactly the same thing. You know, like you're being, re you're being returned with, it's like, okay, whose pajamas are these? You know, like, you know, you go to a wild party and all of a sudden, you know, you don't remember anything. And then what comes to mind is, uh, you know, boy, I don't remember, you know, how did this happen? Or what, how did I get this piece of clothing or, you know, that kind of stuff. So I don't know. I don't know. A lot of a lot of good information, but still a lot of questions remain. And let me tell you whether, um, whether your belief 
is an extraterrestrials, whatever, if, if, whether you believe in ETs or not, or even if you do, maybe the, the way you think of them or their involvement with us is totally different than from what Dolly and Preston described. I do believe in one, especially one thing she said at the end, as far as, um, you know, us being, uh, how can I tell you, be needing to become more self-sufficient and not so sufficient on technology. Okay. And you know what? I'm going to say this because of my age. I can't say it. I've lived basically lucky enough to live during a time period where, like I said, I've in the, in the amount of life that I've lived, these huge leaps in technology have occurred. Okay. Huge leaps of technology. So much so that like I was telling her, Hey, um, yeah, I grew up where in, in a very hot subtropical climate where you turn on the air conditioning at night on a window unit. And the rest of the time you lived, go to, went to school and everything with just a fan and you didn't suffer for it. And now I admit I'm a wimp, like a lot of other people, especially, like I said, in a very hot subtropical climate that there is in South Florida, if you're not in air conditioning, you're like, Oh my God. And I'm thinking, man, I was fine. And by the way, it wasn't because I was a kid. My whole family was like that. Yeah, eventually, you know, you move into a house and you get the central AC. But for many, many, many years, and it wasn't like you felt like, oh, I'm deprived. And I tell everybody, same thing, you know, there was one, there was a couple of phones in the house, one in the kitchen. And I remember my mom put one in her bedroom. All right. And, you know, there was no answering machine, no beepers, no nothing. I remember that. And nobody felt deprived. It wasn't like we were living in a third world country. You know, people, you know, communicate with drums or smoke signals. That was just life, which, by the way, and I've said it before, in some cases, looking back at it, it was better because we we, we did not live in such an on-demand life where people expect you to be uh, always there, always available. Um, if people called and you didn't answer, they assumed, one, you weren't at home, and they would call back in a little bit. Same thing. Anybody that called, there was no answering machine. This was pre the answering machine. Yeah. Eventually, you know, and same thing. You didn't, uh, nobody stressed about either not reaching you or not, you're not answering you and snail mail was fine. You know, no emails. Things got to you when they did. And, and again, when I think back and in other words, if I do a comparison of that time period to now, like I said, I like the technology and some of the comforts, but, but but it's not like I was deprived or I go, oh my God, you know, those years that I was living in the Stone Age and I didn't have anything. And now, no, life was good. I slept well. I, I ate well. I dressed well. I was happy. I was in a modern society with all these things that now that we have as part of modern technology, which I agree with Dolly, have basically very insidiously worked itself into our, um, what do you want to call it? Our, our everyday life so that we think it's necessary to the point that a lot of us would not be able to manage. Okay. Without it. All right. We could, it would be difficult not to have these things. We would be like, Oh yeah, you know, I'm going to give you a perfect example. The phone. Okay. If the phones don't work, people feel like I'm, you know, oh my God. <sighs> yeah. And once upon a time, nobody had a phone. Like I said, you had a phone at home, maybe at where you worked at. That was it. That was it. And if you and the closest thing you had to an answering machine is if you were important enough at your job, you had a secretary that took your calls and wrote a pink memo with the message. Here it is. Here, here's your, here's your, oh, well, you were busy or when you were out, they, this person called. That was it. And everybody survived. As a matter of fact, I think it was a lot less stress. And again, we were more, there was more um, interpersonal contact. There was more self-reliance. Um Despite everything, I think life was a lot slower and in and of itself, it was more enjoyable. How's that? It was more enjoyable. 
Uh, I tell everybody. When I was a kid, I remember uh, Saturdays. I spent Saturday mornings, like most kids, watching TV, you know, all the cartoons. And then right about 11 or 12, when it was just when all the morning cartoons were over and done with, I was outside playing with all the neighborhood kids running around, okay? Until my mom and all the moms in the neighborhood, you know, like when it's getting dark, you got to come inside, all right? And that's what life was. And I think about the only times I ever stayed was if it was raining. And then I remember I would catch some of like these uh, afternoon sh uh, movies, like The Fly or something like that. It was great. Same thing on, on on school days. I remember I used to get home. They used to have dark shadows. You know, they, I would watch TV a couple of hours and then to take a take a bath, do my homework, eat dinner. Uh, my family, we sat outside. We sat outside in lawn chairs after dinner. We talked. Imagine that we talked. If it was a really nice night, sometimes we would walk around the block, just walk. Yeah, and then we'd come inside. I remember my, my my grandfather would watch news like earlier in the day, like early in the evening. We would come inside and we'd watch on TV, whatever. And then that's it. It was time to go to sleep because you have to get up early the next morning to go to work and to go to school. And believe it or not, it was a wonderful existence. It was a wonderful existence because a lot of the things that now people think of as are fantastic when you have that perspective that I have or that other people my age have, look at it and you go, yeah, the trade-off, I don't know. It's great. It's if there's an emergency or you're stuck on the road, it's great to have a phone. But you know what? During those times, here in Florida at least, if you got a flat tire, Florida, uh, the, 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 state, the, the highway patrol would come and help you change your tire. And I'm not talking about the road rangers as in the, I'm talking about the actual troopers will come and help you change a tire. So say there's always a lot of food for thought in what we were talking about. Again, guys, please don't forget to subscribe, hit a like, where you find us if it's on, on any of the video platforms, um, YouTube, I'm on BitChute, I'm on Steemit, I'm on Rumble, I'm, I'm everywhere. I'm everywhere. Uh, also on all the podcast platforms, you can find me there. And please, Go ahead and subscribe, and especially to the uh, to the Substack uh, list that I have, which is it's a newsletter, and um, you can get updated on anything. And of go and of course, go to MiamiGhostChronicles.com, and you can find links to everything I'm talking about. Get links to video shows. You get links to the podcast. The podcast, especially, you can listen on the browser or download the MP3 files without commercial interruptions. So until next time, I've got a lot of great guests coming on. I will see you soon. Take care.